I've come out of my comfort zone today. Today we're on the Lower Itchin Fishery down near Southampton. What a stunning place it is. Weather is absolutely amazing. It's very bright. It could be a nymphing day today, but we've got all the tackle to test. We've got some new stunning airflow rods as light as three weights in 10 foot. We've got nymphing rods, we've got dry fly rods. We've got an amazing new French leader style fly line. You want to see it, it's stunning. Looking forward to giving that a good go. Possibly when we get a bit of cloud or if that sun dips, we could get some dry fly action. But as I've said, could be deep nymphing. Looking forward to this. It's new, it's stunning. I'm raring to give this moving water a good going over. With the conditions being bright, I'm gonna to have to turn to mostly nymphing today. And what better than with the new Euro Nymph airflow rod. 10 foot, three weight, nice and light. Every fish is gonna be a battle. I've got the new V2 reel, but what's most important is this new airflow line. It's a French leader style design, giving you the lightness, but at the end, you've got a two or three foot visible clear orange tip. Now it's called the nymph line. And what you look for is the end of that tip just moving. It's gonna be stunning. I can't wait to use it. When the light dips and hopefully we can get some dry fly action, here I've got the StreamTech V2. This is a eight foot eight for three weight. Again, super light. On the spool, I've got the new Airflow Superflow line. Super thin, super slick, an absolute dream to cast. Can't wait to get this in action with some dry flies tonight. There's a trout sitting down there and you can see it's a lighter colour, a lighter tail, as opposed to the chub with a, a black tail, which is the giveaway. This looks like a cracking brownie, a couple of pound plus. I've got a lovely stretch of river here and we've been given special permission by the Lower Itching Fishery staff to wade. Not normally allowed, but it's going to give me a good chance to cover the water effectively with this duo method. Flowing water, not quite what I'm used to, so a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm still targeting trout. There's some good brown trout in here and I've now got my eyes visually set on a grayling in front of me. So set it with a duo, a dry fly on the dropper and a size 16 little nymph. Put in the new StreamTech V2 a little bit lighter than I'm used to, only a three weight, so a small fish will give me a good fight, not the seven, eight rods, but a lovely fight it was gonna give me. So let's just see if I can tempt a grayling. If you can see, I've got the little dry fly there is, it's a bit like an indicator with the nymph suspended down below and the fish will either come and take the nymph and that little clink will disappear or it'll come up and take the clink itself. This is the new uh, Airflow Superflow line. Obviously it's very very light, it's a river, river line but it's so important that a floating line lies straight and I've got to say this is absolutely straight as a die. Direct contact with anything should take that nymph and what I do like about it is they do ride very high and the speed you can get these flies off the surface with a quick a lift and away. Lesser lines will tend to dig in, you can't quite get that clean lift, but this is just so simple just to lift and put it straight back. Beautiful. It's a little ledge dropping up there, coming off the deeper water onto the gravel where I expect trout or grayling to sit. But it is bright, so I Really, I'm just prospecting with a dry. More in hope, I think. It's like fishing the banks for trout. Again, low profile, keep low. Still always stay behind the, the fish. You notice I'm casting up the flow of the river. I've been told this fish on this bend. I have seen one, but at the moment, they're not taking fish. Right, I've 
tried the uh, duo with the dry and a little suspended nymph with no joy, apart from uh, one unlucky brownie that I let slip back. Uh, I can see a couple of grayling, a couple of trout, and I've been told by my spotters, who are somewhere over here, there's a little perch moved in as well, but I can see two trout, and I can see a grayling, and possibly uh, a chub. So uh, I've gone with a uh, double nymph, slightly heavier one on the point, and a smaller one on the dropper. Now fish this new, and notice a nice matte finish, there's no glare, a Euro Nymph rod with the new Euro Nymph line with a fluorescent tip, about three foot long, and the, the front end sits nice and high, and all I'm watching is for that little dip. So this is a competitor line, high vis end, you're looking for a movement for that last few feet just to slightly dip, that'll indicate a trout. And I can see these grayling here sitting in now, so um, let's see if uh, Mr. Bar can get lucky, because I need to get lucky, because this grayling and river fishing it has got the bug back and previous world champion I just want to come back maybe one day and prove it wasn't a fluke so uh, let's see if uh, Lucky Bar can get lucky again. The thing with this nymphin is you can control the complete depth by just lifting and raising the rod that brings the nymphs up and often if you can see a fish and I can see that's actually a chub can I have a look at it now as it comes towards a fly just, if you lift the rod tip I'll often induce a take as that nymph is uh, ascending to the surface to hatch and that's where they intercept. So just slowly lift your rod and drop your rod. But my eyes are glued to the end of that fly and if it dips, stops. Any change in behaviour compared to the flow of the river, there's a good chance it's a fish and I will hit it. Not too hard, because I'm on light tippet compared to my stronger stuff you typically use on the reservoirs. You've got to go fine because this water down here on the itching is absolutely crystal but it makes stalking a great part of the game and it's nothing better than watching the fish take the fly but at the moment they're not so I'm not watching much apart from the end of my line just gliding down at the same pace. Here comes that chub for a look. What I'm going to do now is I've just hoovered this little bit here so now I've got to increase the cast and cover a fresh bit of water just by lengthening the line and you can see that tip there it's sitting so high and I can spot that that's probably seven eight yards away but I'll start increasing the distance across this pool here and you can see it's sitting nice and high and that will just dip away a grayling or a trout the grayling will tend to just stop the line and I expect the trout to to race off a little bit. But what this gives you is close control, but like lake fishing, you often feel a pull before you strike on a trout when you're nymphing. But same on the lakes and same on the river. 90% of my nymph takes, I don't feel a thing. My eyes are glued to that fluorescent two feet. Now what this will help you, help you give is more detection of the takes and the visibility of the takes, because more often than not that line will move and you'll not feel a thing at your fingertips. So it's important, like that one there, that you just watch the line move. And if you see there, that line just dips beautifully away. And we've got a, a lovely, lovely brownie. And that was prime example. That line just dipped away. What a fight. And this, this rod is just magnificent. It's only a three weight. It's not a massive fish, but God, it feels great. I should do more of this back at home. Right, here's me net. Always have one of those clip-on nets and don't be like me where it's on the bank. Ease it up. Now this low stretch line, I'm feeling everything here at my hands and it's just marvellous. I mean, look at that rod there, bent right over. None of this hauling them in like I do at home on an eight weight rod. This is three weight, delicate fishing. It's like a little size eight, 16 tungsten bead nymph. And here we have Oh, it's bigger than I thought. Well, here we have it. An absolute stunning river itching fish as my net, net drifts away. We'll let that go. Look at that for a fish. An absolute beauty. And it's this kind of fishing on this new little lightweight three-weight rod that wants to get me back into this competition fishing and back doing more rivers. What a beautiful specimen. What a fight. I'll give him the grace of a gentle release. Off you go, fella. And the culprit, being the new Euro Nymph, 10 foot for a three weight. I mean, none of this beastie eight weight stuff that I'm used to. It's actually nice to 
steal the fight from a fish instead of being the big bully. The fish get a fair chance, they have a fair fight. I still did win the battle, but a much more enjoyable battle on this lovely, real soft, cracking little rod. Oh, what a beautiful little fish this is, grayling. The lady of the stream, as they're known. Probably one of the most beautiful fish you can catch. Very lively. So I'm fishing the, the duo method now, and it's probably one of the most effective and quickest ways to sweep a river. And as we say, like the French, you can almost like hoover everything in front of you by covering every little inch. So what you've got to try and imagine is a, a grid in front of you of squares, and then you put your fly into every little square and don't miss everything. And just watching that clink dip away. You'll see every now and again I'm doing a little false cast, that's just to dry, dry the dry if that makes sense, to keep it buoyant, because that is my visual aid. Trying to drop the fly into the gaps between the weeds, that's where the grayling will be, and maybe a trout as well. I've got to say, this is my first go in anger with this rod on the river, and it is extremely impressive. It's only eight foot, eight foot eight to be precise. It's a three weight, super delicate. I tell you what, I can get used to using this. No effort whatsoever. So, so light. I'm just, I just want to put a bend in it. And this line, it just absolutely beautifully glides. And most importantly, it lies dead straight. Direct contact with anything. One or two fish are starting to show now. I've gone to a single dry. And they're coming up and having a nudge. And this is, this is classic, the sun's dipping, we're hidden by some shade and the, we're starting to get some reaction to the dry fly. And this is, this is what I come for. What's important when fishing the dries, the fly line has got to lie straight. On the river, on a lake, it's got to be lying straight. You need to be in contact with that fish. You don't want too many kinks and coils. But what I like about this line is they sit, if you, if you look, if you can see, it sits very, very high. And what's important with the dries is, if a fish rises over here, I can instantly go roll, and I can be straight on it. One rise over there, roll, straight on it. The line sits really high, and it's so easy to lift off. You can do a little roll of the wrist, and the line straight off the water. It's not digging in. Some lines sit low in the surface, and there are times for that, but for dry fly on the river, you need that line to be riding nice and high on the surface. And it just lifts so crisp so beautifully and the presentation is is next to stunning it's incredible nice and delicate and light there's no crash landings it's not a heavy weight weight forward line it just tapered beautifully and lands so gently which is of course on these crystal clear chalk streams is paramount you're not crashing down with your flies because these fish you've got stocked fish but you've got wild grayling and you've got wild trout. That line comes crashing down, you're in for a tough day. Oh, here we go. Grayling's going berserk. At last we've got a what looks like a 
a good measuring grayling, as they say in the competition scene. Come up and swallowed the retira, which is a sedge pattern. Oh, no, it's a mean name of fish. It's not a grayling at all. It's a stunning little brown trout. One nil to the dry fly. Doesn't get any better. Watch the fish travel downstream, engulf the fly. Beautiful, delicate, wild, low itching brown trout. Let's let him go. Go on, fella. Well, that's my first fish on this new eight foot eight three weight airflow rod. A wild brownie from one of the most famous chalk stream rivers in the world, this lower itching. Stunning place, stunning fish, and it took a dry flight. It doesn't get any better than that. Always one down there. I can see, I can see his tail. That's got him. A little bit more to the left. Oh, oh, he thought about it. Another itching grain. Look at the bend in that. This fish is barely 22 centimetres long. And look at the scrap. Amazing. It's another wild, lower itching brownie. I'll release this one in the net. I've been giving this kit now a good half an hour, and I've got to say, I am extremely impressed with this line. It's, it's very thin diameter and it's, it feels so slick in your hand and it's a dream to cast. I mean, it just glides. It's dead straight, ever so supple in the hand. It just feels right, looks right, and I know it's right. We've now two lovely wild brownies so far. I've missed a couple. That's me being a little bit rusty on the dries. But so far, I am really impressed. Really impressed. They're even coming blind. I mean, we've seen two or three fish move, but they're not going crazy. But it's good to see that they will come up blind for a well presented dry. A little size 14 on. And it is the Davy Parker retirer. He came up with a fly. Namely so because the fish are retired when they take it. They just give in. And incidentally, this is the dry fly, which won me my uh, river session on the Tay in the World Championships on my way to the Crown. So it is an awesome little pattern. The sun's setting down behind me here. I've got a three, three and a half hour drive home back to the reservoir world, but I'll tell you something, I'm coming back from all this river fishing. Absolutely loved it. The fishing has been amazing. Grayling, wild trout, stock trout on this new fantastic lightweight rods, lightweight kit. I've really missed this and I've not done it for some time and I'm really missing out. So I'm going to start doing some more. You guys should come and join me and get back to this river fishing. It's amazing. It's real. It's wild. It's an adventure. Thank you.